This week on OSRL. We get some very special panels that create water out of thin air for a completely off-grid source of drinkable water. All right, y'all, there are so many things going on, it is crazy. Now, as many of you might know, we just finished up the foundation for the walls of our house. The walls are just gonna sit right on top of that. So we're really excited. One last thing I wanna do with the foundation is I wanna get some screen going along the bottom to keep rodents from possibly digging underneath this foundation and getting up into the house. Were you helping daddy dig? So I wanna get that done and then I can start on the roof. But as I was starting to dig for that, I got a call. So as you can see here, I got a real good start on that trench to put in the screen. But I got a phone call and we were approved for a water collection system that they're gonna set up right here on our property. It's all solar powered. I'm really excited about the possibility of this. So I gotta prepare for this installation. First things first, I'm gonna empty out the rest of the gravel from this trailer. I'm gonna dump it somewhere off to the side because we'll probably need it sooner rather than later. And then I'm gonna use this to help clean up some of the area around where we're gonna have these panels put in. I'm very excited. All right, that's a nice size pile of gravel. The trailer's all unloaded. I can use that now to kind of pick some things up, move some things around, and get things ready for the big installation coming up. So today, we're doing a little, I was about to say spring cleaning, but it's not quite spring, is it? So today we're about to do a little fall cleaning. Jess is doing some cleaning in our shed. I'm picking up around the shed, getting rid of some of those pallets around there. And uh, we're gonna make sure everything is ready to go when those installers get here. We used to have a bunch of uh, pallets in this area and along the back of the shed. I got all that picked up and removed. Obviously these frames that we have over here, there's not much we can do about that. The frames are gonna have to stay there for now. But uh, eventually I'm gonna break these frames down. We can use that for firewood to heat during the winter so all that will come in handy we'll be using all that for sure we got a bunch of shredded paper from town years back and we we're using it with our mix as almost kind of like a cob but using shredded paper instead of straw so uh, i gotta pick all this up and get this removed i think we're still going to use it we can take it and we can compost it i'm just going to put it into like a temporary container and then we'll just compost it as we go so it'll still get used which would be nice So uh, unfortunately, we got word this morning that Jessica's aunt, one of her dogs, Ty, passed away this morning. And Ty had been with her for a number of years. A uh, very, uh, very special dog to her. So she wants to lay him out to rest out here. That's fine with us. I mean, he's a part of the family. So I spent my time this morning trying to get a good-sized grave dug here. This will be a good spot. He'll be in good company with Toby and crew. Uh, it's a very special little area out here for us. Yeah, unfortunately that came out kind of out of the blue. Uh, we've known Ty now for quite a few years. He was your aunt's uh, dog. You could probably find him. If you go way back in some of our early, early videos in the before times, you might even be able to catch him in there. Grace was actually out here for a while. She was uh, one of the uh, people that came out here with us with her dogs, Ty, Jumpy, and Jax. But uh, Ty was a uh, border collie and very much uh, emblematic of the breed, right? Mm -hmm. Very energetic, very smart. Yeah, he was a smart dog, very friendly. Very friendly, uh, loved pets and attention. Mm -hmm. He loved playing fetch with his balls. And uh, an older dog. He uh, was about the same age as Crew. Yeah, and he ended up passing not too long after a crew did. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, he got sick 
And, you know, an older dog like that, I think it was a little tough for him to recover from that. I know Grace is uh, heartbroken. Our thoughts and prayers go out to her through this time. I know she cared very deeply for Ty. And uh, we were honored to be able to put him to rest out here with uh, all of our other animals. I feel like we kind of have a little sacred spot going with all the animals that have uh, meant so much to us and uh, they've passed away. So he's got a spot next to Toby and uh, Crew and uh, even a uh, little Chaska. All right, I'm back out here. Just want to show you guys I got all that paper picked up, at least for the most part. We still got a bunch of scraps on the ground over here, but uh, no worries. I'm just going to rake that up real quick. She'll only take a few minutes. And the cool thing is we're almost ready for the installation. So that's cool. Hopefully when they get here, they'll be able to set up real easy and we'll be able to plumb that into the shed. Jess has almost got the shed cleaned up and ready to go, but there was a little snag. I'll show you guys. You found that, that little visitor, right? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about how that was. That, that was interesting. So I was clearing out some room in the shed and I heard a noise and I looked in the corner and there's a rat staring at me. It was kind of cute, I thought. <laughs> a little cute. But a little scary. A little scary. It was a pretty big rat. Probably a pack rat. Yeah, it's not too much of a surprise. I mean, during the winter, was it this past winter? The rodent issue was just out of control. And there were mice and rats everywhere around mm -hmm. here. And I think that's why the snakes are so bad this summer. Yeah. Well, the but the rodent population has gone down. Yeah, the thing is, we have not seen as many rodents. Mm -hmm. That was probably the last one I've seen in a while. I felt a little bad kicking that guy out, though. <laughs> Had a nice home in there. Nice little home in the shed. <laughs> it's nice in there. Yeah, it's probably perfect. And, uh, you know, it's like a pack rat, so it, it dragged some stuff in there and kind of messed the shed up a bit. But I had to clean that out and... Get that ready for the source yeah. tank and everything like that. I had to evict the rat. So what a great opportunity to get those source panels in here. That was pretty wild. Uh, I didn't think they would make it out here, but uh, we ended up getting on the list and they gave us a call and how could we turn it down, right? Yeah, free, free water. We're very excited to have these out here. We have not been paid by source. We got these free, but not free to do a video on it. We are completely unsponsored by them. In fact, they're setting up source panels for free for people in the area. They have some kind of grant money or uh, some kind of program. And I believe they started with the Navajo Reservation. And now they're working in our area for a lot of people in rural areas where can be difficult to get water out here sometimes. So it's kind of interesting how these panels work. And if anyone's interested uh, more about that, I think they kind of explain that on the website. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically it's all solar powered. It runs these little fans that draws air in there and then it takes water vapor out of the air it condenses it and then collects it and it runs into a tube that goes into a little tank and then they have a filter on there to filter the water and make it drinkable i think it adds minerals and stuff too right yeah so a really nice kind of like little contained system that pulls water right here from the atmosphere. Uh, there might be a few things to know. The panels do make some noise. We went to a neighbor's who has the panels already installed and working, and there was like kind of a, a humming kind of noise. Mm -hmm. 
because there's fans in there. There's some kind of pumps. On the website, it says something about how it's around 60 decibels. So it's, it's like moderately noisy, not, you know, super loud, but... Uh, Once we get those uh, panels turned on, we should get some audio for them. Yeah, we'll do that. Keep an eye on the next video. Also, you know, these are pretty big. You'll know from the video that they couldn't just pick them up and put them over. They had to bring a tractor to hoist it up and it took a couple people to, you know, keep it straight and everything like that. So these panels are heavy. They're not getting mounted on a roof at all. They have to be ground mounted somewhere. And it runs by solar energy. So I assume it doesn't run during the night or anything, but during the day, if you want a, any significant amount of water, supposedly like it needs to be in direct sunlight for at least six hours a day. No, nothing like that's gonna shade it in any way. We had to think about like, where exactly do we want this thing? We are thinking like, should we have it by the house? But technically we don't have a house yet for them to plumb it into. So we weren't sure if we were gonna build something real quick, but then we're thinking, you know what? The shed makes an absolutely perfect a little thing it's not so far from the house it would be a pain to get water from but it's not too close where you're bothered by the hum of the panels i think it was just right for us so be thinking about that like location if you are thinking about getting these i'm not expecting to get a ton of water from this yeah it but it might be a nice supplement you know for just some drinking water Ex exactly it's Think of it as like a supplemental source. I don't think it could be like the source unless you had like a bunch of these panels set up or something like that. Yeah. Maybe if you had like a, a source panel farm. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I think for us, you know, uh, as long as it works, it should be nice to have an alternative source of water. We're still going to use rainwater for our main you know water needs but but it's kind of cool to have it never hurts to have a backup a little bit of redundancy in your systems never hurts so i guess ideally someone would be right behind the installers turning the system on once they got everything in place but it looks like the person turning on the systems is a little bit behind might take a day or two before somebody comes around to actually turn the system on so we're waiting for that. And then I think once they turn the system on, then someone comes around to do the testing just to make sure uh, the water's clean and usable. And then we can be ready to go. Mm -hmm. Made a little pee too. Uh, I'm just gonna check out the shed. We'll let you guys know exactly like how much water we're getting out of it, how it all works and everything. We'll take you guys along in the process. So stay tuned, be watching. If you're in Cochise County and you're interested in uh, seeing if you can get panels set up, we'll leave some information from them down below. So give them a call, maybe you can get put on the list. They said they still have uh, some panels to give away, so we're looking for more people that could use that. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to see how these things work. Uh, hopefully, we'll be contacted soon to even just have these panels turned on. That would be nice. <laughs> Other than that, I wish I had been able to get more work done in the house, but things come up, and that's okay. You just got to roll with it. I'll be doing some more digging, trying to um, get that wire set up around the house, make sure we get no uh, rats in the house much like we got one in the shed let's keep those pests out right? <laughs> so i'll be working on that and uh, hopefully i can uh start getting the roof up on here soon all right y'all we'll catch you on the next video bye